Hiya folks, haven't done a video on retro restore for about five days. I've been a bit busy. So what have we got in today's video for you? Well, I'm gonna be showing you a bit of what we've been doing for the last five days in the garden. I'm gonna show you a new garden implement we've got in the uh, polytunnel, which uh, Gary brought around the other day, which is, needs restoration basically. And I'm also gonna show you some work I've been doing on the Triumph Acclaim as well. I've been doing a bit of welding, getting it ready for MOT, hopefully. So I'll see you in a minute. Right, well, as I say, I've been very busy. Although I've not put a video out on uh, Retro Restore, which is this channel, I've been busy on Butler's Empire and the other channel as well. And I've also got to do some work on Retro Hacks as well. So I've got to keep three or four channels going at the same time. So it can be a bit tricky sometimes, but I have been busy. So let's just show you, if you've seen my Butler's Empire videos, you would have seen the garden and getting the patio up. Let's just show you. So this is where we had the original brick pathway, as you know, the patio with uh, paving slabs. And underneath it's someone's actually poured a concrete slab underneath. So we can basically lay our patio directly on top of that. This was the sort of fix, thickness of the uh, cement that was underneath, which we chipped up. That's the actual paving slabs on the top there. And as you can see, what happened was the, uh, the mortar base they were sitting on actually come up with the slabs. And these were the sort of chunks, the last third of the patio, which is here, this sort of area here, which was probably the first bit they laid. They used a totally different concrete mix and this really was hard to get up. We had to chip them up like this. The ones down that end, for example, come up as full slabs. And uh, as I say, we got to about there and then we got the problem. So that took really a long time to do that. I've got a little bit of pathway just to lift down the end there. I've got to do this before the weekend. And also this concrete here has got to be broken up here. Just this little section here, because that was the uh, slabs from over that side, which were a different slab set up. This is all sand or compressed gravel or whatever. So this has all got to be tamped down because this the patio is going to be going along here. All this is be patio. So there's a, there'll be a bit of the corner of the pond that needs to be filled in with cement when we get this eventually dug out. This is all coming out of the pond. We lift the liner up obviously and uh, away we go with that. And uh, yeah, so we are getting there. As you can see, it's a bit of a mess at the moment, but I had to put this board down here because I had to get my welder out of the log cabin. I'll show you that in a minute, getting the uh, welder out to go out to the front to weld the Triumph Acclaim up, which I've actually done that yesterday. But coming in here, into the polytunnel, Gary popped round the other day and he got this for free. And uh, this is an old rotavator. I don't know what mate. oh, it's a quoll cast. There we go. So the person who give it to him, give him these two things, which apparently are two new mud guards for it, brand new. And uh, they obviously bolt on the side there somehow. He give him two new blades that, with it as well. As you can see, look, absolutely brand new blades, although they're a little bit rusty, but they are new. The original blades are still on there. And apparently the chap who had it said uh, he did try another carb on it, but he can't get it to tick over slow. And, uh, oh, it's an old carb now, look. So that might have been the original one that was on it. It's a Zenith carburetor. So he's actually bought, whether he bought this one second hand or what, I don't actually know. But, uh, so we have got two carbs to play about with. And bearing in mind, it will run apparently, but it won't tick over at low revs. So nothing that the ultratonic cleaner wouldn't be able to clear, I would imagine. So yeah, this looks like a good candidate for a good old restoration. There are lots of things we can powder coat on this. The handles are a little bit rusty, as you can see, but uh, it's all there. And uh, we've got obviously a maximum, minimum and stop. The cables appear to operate the throttle body there, as you can see. So yeah, we'll have a look at it, but that's something which probably will be coming up later on the channel. And uh, yeah, he got that for nothing. So belt drive on the side there, as you can see, there's a big pulley there. So it probably need um, stripping down and probably having a new belt on it, I would imagine. But uh, even them blades don't look too bad, to be honest with you, but uh, you know, as we've got the new ones there, they'll probably get fitted because I can see there. Come out of the way, Barney. Come out of the way. There appears to be some sort of modification on this side where someone's welded a bit of tube over the uh, shaft on, on that side. So there will be some sort of modification that someone's done there. But you know, there's one of the mudguards there. Look, obviously, oh, they are both there. The other one's underneath there. So the mudguards sit under there. So there you go. And uh, 
yeah, so that possibly will be coming up. There's the old web lawn mower in front there, as you know, that Gary was going to restore, but we again, we haven't got time to do it. I've, I did start powder coating some parts for it, as you probably remember up there, and they're still sitting there, all freshly powder coated, although they're covered with dust at the moment. And uh, yeah, so there we go, that's that. So coming out the front, I did do some welding on the Triumph for Claim yesterday. And uh, one thing I wanted to do was get that rear section under the passenger side rear wing now. I'll try to show you a picture of that. I think I've got a picture from a video. I'm sure I did actually record it. So uh, here's a picture of what it used to look like. And apparently this was an MOT failure, so I was told by somebody else. I was gonna leave it for someone else to repair, but bearing in mind, I'm gonna put this through an MOT and get it legal. I had to do this repair. So I actually did that repair. Unfortunately, I didn't film it, but uh, I'll show you what I've actually done. Let's get underneath the back. So apparently it's a common place for all these uh, Triumph claims. If I come down here, oh, let's get under here. There we go. I don't know if you can see that. So I've actually welded in a plate there along there that was all rotten all along here was all holed and perforated so as you can probably see there i've actually my welding is not too bad there to be honest with you look i'm really pleased with the way that turned out on the welding and i also had to weld uh, a little patch around the corner there because there was a hole around this side as well but as you can see that is solid as a rock now and that should fly through an mot now I'm real pleased with that. And it's to say, the welding is actually pretty neat for me. There we go, I'll try and get you a bit nearer so you can see the welding. There we go. And that's it, yeah. So I've just given it a coat of uh, underseal there just to protect it. So that's it, absolutely perfect. I'm, I'm well happy with that. Turned out very well. And uh, don't forget, I'm not a welder. I'm just a do-it-yourself, working on my back, laying upside down, working under a car, on these drive. There we go. I want to try and fit these little ends that we've had 3D printed by one of my subscribers onto the uh, end of these caps here. And uh, they sort of go in like that and fix down, once you press the rubber in, something like that. And the way they fix, they've got a hole in them there, as you can see. And that hole has got to fit through that little plate there, which is a, uh, it did have a screw in it and the screws all broke off. So uh, what I have to do is get these lined up to where they need to go. And then you slide the, uh, the thing in afterwards. So that's the position of it. And you've got to push that in like that. So that's got to be the position of it there. So I need to make a mark where these sit and then pull that rubber strip out and then drill straight through into the uh, the plate underneath and then put a self tapper in there. So that's the plan anyway. So I'm gonna try and hold that where it is and then pull this rubber out and then drill straight through. So let's give that a go. Right, so what I've done is pull this out now and I've made a mark where it actually sits on the plate below so I can see that mark there now. What I need to do now is to Get a small enough drill bit. Right, I'm hoping that that drill size will be all right. So, I've got these little self tappers here. I'm just gonna drop one in there. And uh, hopefully that will screw down into our base without any problems. So far, so good. And then I can slide in, hopefully, this plastic and push it in along its length. And that, hopefully, will be okay. There we go. A little bit more pushing in there. And that's on, that's finished. I'm pretty happy with that. Don't forget they were 3D printed by one of my subscribers. Just finishes it off nicely, the way it should be, because you can't buy them ends no more. So I'm gonna carry on, do the rest of them, and I'll come back to you in a minute.
Okie dokie, so I've just marked this one and uh, let's get a hole drilled. Right, so that's that hole drilled. I'm going to fix this back again first. Put these little screws, they're only these little tiny short screws, look at that, look. Just drop that in the hole. Easier said than done when you you got sausages for fingers. <laughs> there we go. And hopefully, let's get that in there. Just screw it down, be nice and firm with it. As I say, there's a little metal plate there. It's not going into the actual roof itself. There's these little metal plates that are, are installed under these. There we go, like that. Okay. And tease that back in there. And then put our rubber in. All the way along. Get in there. There we go. That's it. And that's the final one in. That's all four of them now on. I've got two screws to fix back into this aerial here. So let me go see if I can find them. I think they're in the, on the back parcel shelf. Right, I've got these two screws here. One looks like a little M4 or something like that. And the other one's a self-tapper. So I've just tried the self-tapper. I don't think that fits it. So because I've got this one here, I'll just try that in there and see if that screws in. If it does, we've got the right screw and it looks like that's the one. So it's like a little M4. So I've got to find the other one of them. There we go, and it's pulling down a tree. Oh, that's perfect. Right, so that's what the screw is. I've got to find another one of them, and I'll be back in a minute. There we go. Aerial is now back attached. All the end caps are on. And that just finishes it off nicely. Happy day, so I'm pleased with that. Another little job ticked off the, off the list. Right, while I'm out here doing a bit of tinkering, I want to find out why these repeater indicators aren't working. The front ones are, and the back, as you can see there, but uh, the repeaters, although I've put new bulbs in them, they're them silly little festoon type bulbs with the wires on the side, and maybe they're not making a good enough connection. So while I've got this on, let's take this cover off and let's have a look at the bulb holders. <laughs> so I'm hoping this is just gonna be a, either loose terminations or poor terminations on the lamp holders themselves, or them silly little bulbs ain't making a proper connection, so. Let's have a little look inside. They're only a simple thing. So let's just pull it out of there. And this is the bulbs. Oh, here we go, there we are. Poor connection. Oh, that's perfect. Happy days, that's going back on. <laughs> I think what it was, they was pushed in too far. And I felt a bit of resistance when I just pulled the bulb back a little bit there. Right, that's it, that works, that's fine. So let's do the same to the other side. It's just nice when something goes right for a change. It's just nice when something goes right for a change. Normally I get all sorts of problems, as you well know. It's just nice when it goes right. So again, very simple design, as you can see. Oh, that don't look like a new bulb in that one. I thought I changed them. No, that's an old bulb. I didn't change that one. I'm going to put a new bulb in there. I do believe that that bulb has actually gone, so bear with me. I'll be back in a second. And let's get my 12 volt tester. Put this on the terminals and see if we've got voltage. No, I'm not seeing any voltage at these terminals there. So I'm just wondering whether or not these are fed separately so I'm gonna to have to check the manual to find out what the score is. Right, well, I've just put a new bulb in. The new bulb works, but there is an issue with the indicator stalk switch. I'll show you that in a minute. So now we've got this working. Let's put that back in there. Yeah, as I said, I didn't realize there was also a little issue with the indicator stalk itself. And I've only just found it by accident, to be honest with you, because I was just playing about a bit, because this side indicators weren't working. And I had a little flick about with the switch and noticed that it has a, a little intermittent problem, which we didn't know before. And again, it's something else I'm going to have to address as well. So that's it now. They're in, working as they should be. That's all the indicators working fine. And if we come into the driver's seat, Right, the indicator's on at the moment, this side as you can see. Neutral position. Let's turn that fan off, don't need that one. 
Right, the indicator on the left, no problem. Middle, right down, as you can see, no indicator is flashing until you just move it up a little bit and then it comes on. So there's obviously some sort of issue with the switch. It may be a loose switch, I'm not too sure yet. So I'm gonna have to take the cowling off and find out when you just push it past, down, look, it, uh, it goes off. So I will clean that with the uh, contact cleaner. So I'm gonna have to take that cowling off and get to the bottom of that problem. Right, well, I've had a little look at the manual and apparently I've got to prise that sensor bit out and get the steering wheel off. Now that's that, get the wheel straight, it says, which is common sense, really. Okie dokie, and what size nut is that? 19 mil or 17 mil? It's a 19, and uh, hopefully it won't be that tight. So let's get that undoing. God, it is tight, isn't it? About to be. <laughs> So bear with me, hold on. Oh. Right, okay, that is tight. Lucky enough, on a car at this age, you don't have any airbags to worry about. So let's get that out of there. The manual says you have to remove the steering wheel and then you gain access to the indicator stalk. So that's me nut off. Put that up there and good old fashioned, oh, that's nice. Little wiggle comes straight off. Right, okay, now this is the bit I'm interested in. I have undone all these nuts around here. And uh, that's very dirty, that terminal there. So that's the clock wheel, which might, might have something to do with the indicators, but here's the actual indicator stalk. Um, it's got a silly little pivot action. I would imagine it could be old grease. That uh, could be the problem here. So I think what I'll do I'll give it a good squirt of cleaner. That could be the horn, that actually, that uh, circular bit there. So I would imagine that could be the horn. This one here, so I will give that a clean anyway. There's a little thing there that goes on horizontal like that. So if I keep that that way around. Well, that's obviously the indicator mechanism. And it looks like the terminals are there on the side there, which Maybe worn or... Right, let me just uh, do a bit of investigation, read the manual, and just to see exactly what's going on here. I'll be back in a minute. Right, okay, I've given it a good squirt with the, uh, the cleaner. And let's see what it does now. That side works fine. Even, look, there we go. Even when I push it, no problem. So I think it was just dirty contacts. So I can safely, hopefully, put this back together now. And it should be fine, look, it's not making no difference whatsoever. I can move that about and wiggle it, which before it was stop start. And as I say, I think these little terminals up there were the problem. Inside here is like a spring with a spring terminal on it. And top and bottom are the two terminals at the back there, which you, you can't see. But throwing it up there, that spring pushes against that terminal. And I do believe right at the end of the travel there, it was a bit dirty. So all I've done is give it a good squirt with a contact clean, not WD-40, because that leaves a residue. Uh, contact clean removes any greasy residues and also oxidation as well. So get yourself some of that. And it looks to have solved the problem, because I can, no matter how much I wiggle that about now, look, it's not a problem. So. I'm just going to put this back together now. I did undo all these cowling screws, by the way, and uh, I was just in the process of taking this off, but uh, I thought I'd test it and show you just before I do that. So let me put this all back together now, and hopefully we've solved the problem. Okie dokie, that's it. Let's put the ignition on, and let's turn the indicators on first to the right or left, and then over to the troublesome right. Happy days, look at that. So you're gonna get dry joints and uh, bad connections on a car that's been standing for such a long time. And uh, we just come across this one. We didn't know it was there, but I needed to do it for the MOT and it's all now fine. So put that back to normal. 
Let's just start it out, give it a start. Let's pull the choke out all the way. It starts up instantly. Put it choking halfway. There we go. I did start this up yesterday and it started up absolutely first time. And uh, we couldn't do that before. The choke's on the first notch now. So uh, as you can see, it's ticking over a little bit fast there, but uh, it will slow down when it warms up a bit. And I've had this ticking over perfectly from uh, with the choke right in. Let's push the choke right in. Here we go, look at that, look at, look at that, look how steady that uh, rev counter is. That's from absolute cold. I haven't started this at all before this. Oh, look, postman's just turned up. Happy days. So, there we go. A little bit nearer, finishing the triumph for claim. Good job's done. All I've got to do now is bleed the brakes all the way through. Uh, put new fluid in. I want to do that, flush all the old fluid out. I've got to refurbish three of the wheels and we've also got to get the uh, rear boot lid painted as well. And I think that's basically it. So we're very, very near. You may see some of that on camera. You may not. It depends on how far we get with the garden. I'm trying to do about six things at once here at the moment. Anyway, if you do like what you see on my channel, do hit the subscribe button, ring that little notification bell there and set your preferences to all. That way you get notified every time I upload a video. Check out my other channels, Butler's Empire, where you'll see some behind the scenes stuff of what I'm up to in our day to day life. And also check out our Retro Hacks channel, where I do some silent restoration stuff and things like that. Anyway, hope you've enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one. And until then, bye for now.